afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're joined today by London Mayor Ed Holder and the Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Chris Mackey. We'd like to welcome the media who are in attendance this afternoon and invite them to submit their questions using the question forum here on Microsoft Teams. We'd also like to welcome those tuning in this afternoon on Rogers Television, Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, those watching on the CTV London website, and those listening to News Talk 1290 CJBK. We'll get to the opening statements right away, and we'll start with London Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thank you, Beth, and good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start by giving you a shout out to Western University, along with its affiliate colleges, Brescia, Huron, and Kings. You know, since launching their proof of vaccination effort late last month, did you know that 97% of faculty and staff are now vaccinated? along with 98% of the student population. Not only that, but in residents, 99% of students are vaccinated. And I'm talking for all those groups double vaccinated. These results are truly remarkable and deserving of recognition. You know, I've said from the start that the overwhelming majority of young people in our region get it. And these numbers only serve as further evidence. I'd also like to say that I still have serious concerns over the types of unsanctioned gatherings we've seen recently in off campus student neighborhoods. And given the nice weather we're expecting over the weekend, my concerns are definitely heightened. I know I know from having spoken uh, with him directly that this is something that Western's president, Alan Shepard, takes very seriously, as does uh, USC uh, president as well, who wrote a joint communique uh, applauding good behavior and challenging uh, the awkward and frankly negative behavior that is not representative of students. I'd like to applaud uh, Alan for being proactive when it comes to sanctions and consequences for those who risk public health and safety. I, sh I share his commitment to this issue and have been in contact with representatives from our bylaw enforcement division along with senior leadership at the London Police Service. Going forward, I can tell you there will be zero tolerance for the types of behaviors we've seen recently from a select few, and consequences could range from fines, criminal charges, school expulsion, or all the above. Whether someone's vaccinated or not, getting together in these types of numbers with no masks or social distancing, especially with the highly transmittable Delta variant now dominant, is a recipe for disaster. Did you know that even with a double vaccination, we still have 20% of individuals with double vaxes that get the variant. And that, when we talk about as a recipe for disaster, is truly that. And heightened with that is the bad behavior that we saw last weekend. And we have to say no more. But I'm hopeful the type of leadership displayed by the overwhelming majority of Western students who've done the right thing by getting vaccinated will prevail, who have actually maintained appropriate conduct will prevail, not only uh, this weekend, but for the duration of the school year. If not, as I've said, our approach will be one of zero tolerance. Lastly, just a reminder, our own vaccination policy for the City of London employees will be publicly released tomorrow at noon before it's finalized next week at Council. I won't have any further comment on what that amended policy looks like until it's before the public, but I will say it's a much stronger and more straightforward policy and one that helps ensure we do our part when it comes to mitigating the worst effects of this fourth wave. So that's it for me now and over to you, Dr. Mackey. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we did have 29 cases reported yesterday. That's the highest we've had in about a week. Wednesday caseloads usually are our peak. Overall, we're actually sitting on a trend that's fairly flat. If you look at seven day moving average in Middlesex and London, uh, the provincial numbers have slowed their increases, still climbing. Uh, it's really encouraging to see the local numbers flat. We know that those are likely to go up. Uh, schools opening, we've got post-secondary back in, uh, the, the behavior that uh, the mayor identified uh, potentially causing some spread. Uh, but it's 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 pretty encouraging at this point to see the uh, the vaccine firewall holding out so well. Uh, minimal spread into people who are fully vaccinated. And of course, all of our deaths uh, in the last uh, two months have been among people who are not vaccinated fully. Uh, those numbers are quite encouraging. I do want to highlight 
one of the non-infectious related aspects of our pandemic so far, we continue to see significant issues with food insecurity. Uh, there's heavy demand on the food bank. Uh, we know that many people have lost uh, jobs and work stoppages have meant that lots of people haven't had adequate income. In Canadians who have uh, children in their family, 19% of people are reporting uh, food insecurity during the pandemic. And that means 19% of Canadians uh, households with children in them have had uh, some time when they couldn't afford enough food for their ham family to keep everyone healthy. That's discouraging for many reasons, uh, one of which is that an adequate diet is required for a strong immune system to help prevent COVID and fight it off if it, if it is acquired. So a, a significant risk uh, from a health perspective on lots of levels. I do want to highlight that we do have emergency food options in our community. Uh, we have a list of those at healthunit.com slash emergency dash food. I will put that link in the chat, but it's healthunit.com slash emergency dash food. Uh, Beth, I will pause there. Happy to take any questions. Great. Thanks very much, Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder for those opening statements. We'll get to the questions right away. We have a couple in queue, but just a reminder to the media, certainly there is a bit of a delay. So if you have a burning question this afternoon, please do make sure you get it into the question forum as soon as you can. We'll start with the first one here, Dr. Mackey. It's from Jane Sims with the London Free Press. It is for you. The Thames Valley District School Board deferred a decision last night to later this month whether to ask for revised guidance from the province about the use of wind instruments, singing, and contact sports inside schools. For now, the board is allowing these activities outdoors only. Also deferred was a decision whether to add COVID-19 vaccines to the compulsory vaccination list. Should we expect Dr. Moore to weigh in on this? And until then, do you have any immediate advice concerning contact sports at schools? Yes, thanks for the question, Jane. We certainly have provided the school boards uh, some advice around how to do those activities as safely as possible you know, uh, masking, uh, the, if, if, if schools are going to engage in contact sports, we've recommended it against, you know, inter-school or interdivisional play. Um, certainly vaccination policies should be, uh, if, if they're, if anywhere, they, they should be strongest in these sort of uh, uh, optional and discretionary programs so that there really shouldn't be exceptions even around conscientious objection uh, for those sorts of programs. You know, we also recognize the importance of sport and music for the well-being of, uh, of children. So there certainly is a positive aspect to continuing to offer those programs. Thanks very much for that response, Dr. Mackey. Our next question comes to us from Sophia Rodriguez with CBC London. This question is for you, Dr. Mackey. With cases trending upward across the province, do you expect to see more restrictions in place? Considering vaccination rates are rising, what, what would it take to trigger a lockdown or further restrictions? Do we rely on case numbers, hospitalization numbers, or behavior, and for example, if we're spending more time indoors? Thanks for the question, Sophia. I, I think, uh, Really, the answer can only come from the provincial government in terms of more restrictions uh, provincially. And if you look at the past um, pattern, the provincial government has focused on ICU rates and hospital capacity. And when ICU uh, intensive care unit uh, beds have filled up, then the province has implemented those measures to control uh, COVID in order to make sure that that system doesn't become overwhelmed. That seems to be the most relevant trigger. And, you know, the, 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 the conversation with government over the summer has really been about, uh, uh, you know, you heard the Minister of Education use the language about normalizing COVID in schools. 
Uh, so, so I think the government's perspective on that is likely to be that you know they'll reserve those measures for when they're most needed. Uh, locally, we will uh, certainly consider additional restrictions if and when we have significant outbreaks associated with specific locations. The most important thing that everyone can do right now is get vaccinated, and the most important thing that businesses can do to stay open is ensure that all of their staff are vaccinated and uh, preferably their clients, contractors, volunteers, etc. as well. Thanks very much, Dr. Mackey, for that response. We have another question here from Sophia Rodriguez with CBC London. This question is for both Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey. Some businesses are bracing for harassment amid vaccination passports coming into effect. What can businesses do or what can businesses who are already being targeted do? So why don't we start with you, Mayor Holder, and then we'll pass to you, Dr. Mackey. Well, thanks, Sophia. Firstly, um, uh, the, the issue of harassment of business owners, uh, at least to this point, has been very minimal, and I think that's positive. Uh, you'll note that the Premier made it clear uh, that businesses have the ability to uh, restrict people from entering their shops. More importantly, if they haven't shown for uh, for various establishments uh, d a proof of double vaccination. And uh, again, that's absolutely appropriate. It's no different than when uh, there was some question some time ago about uh, uh, individuals coming into shops without masks. Did uh, proprietors of shops have the ability to say no? And they do. Having said it, if someone chooses to be to uh, be contrary to the owner's wishes to leave then their option is to, certainly to call the police and the police will respond the police are aware that this is a potential of an issue that can happen and uh, frankly uh, with the limited uh, number of complaints that we have heard thus far we will not minimize the issue uh, but we have not uh, seen that it is a large issue uh, as yet in our community. But the option absolutely, because it is the right of a shop owner to ban someone from their store uh, if they are uh, not consistent with the provincial guidelines. And if that's the case, then the option for that uh, shop owner would be to call the police to have that person removed. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey. Yeah. I mean, not much to add there. You know, the vast majority of customers seem to appreciate businesses taking them there and their safety seriously. Uh, and, and I hope that we don't have a lot of that. We certainly have seen that uh, with our own staff with the health unit on our phone lines and in some of our uh, clinic operations where people are upset about, uh, you know, being required to get vaccinated or, or other, you know, public health measures over the course of the pandemic. Unfortunately, it is a uh, an aspect that uh, that has been uh, present throughout the pandemic, and uh, you know, there's there's certainly no magic bullet solution. And I understand that people are stressed, frustrated, and uh, very much over this whole pandemic. Uh, and you know, I hope that we can still uh, remain civil and respectful of each other. Thank you very much, Dr. Mackey and Mayor Holder for that response. Our next question comes to us from Jane Sims with the London Free Press. It is for you, Mayor Holder. Mayor Holder, given your support for vaccine passports and the gaining momentum for comprehensive double vaccination policies in workplaces, are you satisfied with what the city's proposed policy looks like? Oh, you're just on mute there, Mayor Holder. Well, Jane, as I indicated in my uh, opening statement, which I'm sure uh, you picked up on, uh, the City of London will be releasing its own vaccination policy for employees uh, tomorrow at noon. And then uh, so, and then uh, before it's finalized next week at Council. So those are the steps. Uh, I've indicated that the amended policy is much stronger and, and uh, more straightforward as policy goes. Uh, but it is not my place to preempt uh, the announcement that is going to come tomorrow. 
Thanks very much for that response, Mayor Holder. We have a question here from Sawyer Bogdan from AM980 CFPL. Um, it looks like it is for both Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey, so I'll read the question. Are there any updates on the large street parties from this weekend and earlier this week? And is the health unit and bylaw officials still investigating? So, Mayor Holder, why don't we start with you with that question? Sure. Well, thanks, uh, sir, for that question. It's an important one because what I've certainly heard from the community is uh, our grave concerns about uh, mass crowds and uh, errant behavior of uh, some of those individuals uh, you know, within those crowds. And uh, as such, I have uh, been in touch with our own bylaw enforcement uh, staff. I have been in touch with the uh, London police with respect to uh, that weekend's happenings which uh, I think I commented on in a prior uh, press conference uh, were absolutely unacceptable. Things like uh, throwing beer bottles uh, at uh, at police and paramedic services, not allowing paramedic uh, ambulances to get out because crowds were blocking it. Absolutely disgusting and stupid because this is all about health and this is all about safety. Uh, those uh, situations are being investigated. I will tell you when an investigation occurs, one of the primary concerns is not only for the safety of the crowd, but the safety of the uh, enforcement officers involved with it. And when you have numbers in the thousands versus uh, those who are trying to enforce the law in the tens, uh, and then you don't have and, and you have alcohol induced behaviors, frankly, I think what is paramount is the safety of the enforcement officials and our police as well. And so uh, at this point, uh, it is being investigated. I'm not aware at this stage whether charges have been laid. Um, uh, the situation is still uh, uh, being investigated. And if there is an opportunity to uh, lay charges, I will highly encourage it. And uh, I can tell you that um, should that occur and should that involve uh, university students, I think the president of Western's position uh, and the USC president is extremely clear. Thank you, Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey. Yeah, not a lot to add here. The health unit doesn't have a mandate to investigate street parties. Of course, we would investigate any cases or outbreaks that came of that and uh, take any other public health measures uh, needed. The uh, I, I do want to mention though, Beth, uh, something I meant to bring up during my introductory remarks. I, I know the media and many others follow our dashboard very closely. We've revised our dashboard significantly beginning at noon today. Uh, we've reset the school cases so that we're tracking 2021-22 cases uh, separately. We have provided a break, breakdown of active cases by municipality. We had cases overall by municipality. We now have active cases reported by uh, lower tier municipality as well in our area and uh, we have age groups that now better align with school cohorts for reporting purposes and uh, we've got a breakdown of vaccination coverage by upper tier municipality and you can see that the county of middlesex uh, is slightly more vaccinated than the city of london but both have excellent first and second dose vaccination rates over 75 and 80 uh, percent respectively the uh, we've also uh, included, and I'll just screen share for this last one, some additional information about our uh, about vaccination status. And is that coming through? Great. So uh, you you these buttons at the top will take you to the different sections of the dashboard in case you haven't been there before. This one's brand new vaccination status. Uh, you'll see over the last six weeks, as uh, we have reported for some time, 0% of deaths uh, are in fully vaccinated people. And if you go down, you'll also see uh, cases, ever hospitalization, ever hospitalized and deaths uh, all the way back to December 23rd, 2020, the first day of va the vaccination campaign in Middlesex and London. And again, I want to point here to the deaths at 90% of the deaths in that time have been among those not vaccinated. Zero percent, absolutely no deaths in fully vaccinated people since the beginning of the vaccine campaign. Uh, the, the healthcare story is similar. Only 1.1 percent of hospitalized cases were ever vaccinated and cases overall in that time 
uh, only 1.9% fully vaccinated. So once again, telling a very clear story about the effectiveness of vaccination. Great, thanks very much, Dr. Mackey, for walking us through that dashboard. Mayor Holder, did you have something to add there? Yeah, I wanted to just add to Sawyer's question mm -hmm. about the large street parties, <clears throat> particularly as it seems to impact uh, students uh, from Western uh, in significant numbers. And it kind of, and it ties into the my opening comments about the high, high percentage, like dramatically high percentage of people, uh, students, uh, faculty, staff from Western who have been uh, double vaccinated, almost 100%. And there might be a false sense of security that because you've been double vaxxed, somehow we can uh, congregate in groups. But I'd like to send a message to the students who still think this is a really good idea. And that is that just because you've been double vaccinated does not prevent you from uh, getting uh, the Delta uh, variant of concern. In fact, 20% of the cases typically now of COVID uh, cases are those who have been double vaccinated. So think about that for just a second. Now we have what we would call potentially a super spreader event. Now the difference is if, you, if for those who've been double vaccinated, and we all know this, the, the issue is that the likelihood of showing symptoms or having to go to the hospital are dramatically reduced. So one could be a carrier again, even though they've been double vaxxed, not know they have the uh, have COVID and themselves become a spreader inadvertently. So don't presume because you're hanging around with others that you think have been double vaxxed that it can't happen. Because when you have crowds of thousands of people or hundreds or dozens, the potential for any one of those individuals to be uh, a host of the COVID virus is dramatic. And when that happens, if you could imagine with thousands of people together, 20% of those people get it and maybe more because there's close proximity, there's not wearing masks. So again, my caution to the students is don't participate in those kinds of events because the challenge you've got is that you could likely be uh, catch COVID yourself and whether you realize it or not, become someone who spreads COVID to others who are innocent and don't even imagine uh, that they would get it. So I'm expressing caution and deep concern for the safety uh, and well-being of our students and those with whom they have contact. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder, for that added comment to the question. Um, Sophia's question was the last in queue this afternoon, so that leaves us with no more questions to answer. Thank you very much, Mayor Holder and Dr. Mackey for joining us this afternoon. We will be back on a Monday at two o'clock. And as Dr. Mackey mentioned, until Monday, you can stay up to date with the latest cases reported by the Middlesex London Health Unit over the weekend now. So starting on Saturday, September 11th, the health unit will be posting its dashboard once again over the weekend at 12 noon. We'll see you back here on Monday. Thanks to everyone and have a great weekend.